So yeah, we're back with another video and uh, after a long break, uh, after my last video, uh, I'm back with another video. So I've been looking through my uh, recent, well, my videos on my YouTube channel and I saw my very first video which is a sword tutorial with Blender and it's not pretty. So I was like, okay, it's this, this needs a re remake though. It does this video. So yeah, I'm hoping you're gonna be enjoying this uh, video um, since I'll be remaking this. This will low key be a uh, tutorial video because I'll be showing you how to create this um, this sword that I have created. This, uh, like this one right here. So yeah, I'm gonna show you the process of it though, how it's made. And yeah, this works both in Eevee and in Cycles. I'm just gonna tell you that already. So yeah. Um, yeah, I would hope you're gonna learn something from this video and let's get right to it. So yeah, this is Blender 3.0 and this is the latest version that they have recently released and I have in, lo in love with the features that they've added this, the subtle details to, um, yeah. And, and, is actually really good overall and I love it though. So we're gonna be using this for the first time in a video. <laughs> so yeah, and let's get started though. So we're gonna use the default cube. So we're gonna go to edit mode and now we're gonna select, oh, uh, well actually we're gonna yeah, extrude it, oh, we'll s uh, scale it down, up <laughs> rather. And then we're gonna, um, yeah, select these four uh, faces right here, Alt S. Actually, we're not using screencast because they don't have a Blender 3.0 version of it. So yeah, bear with me. So yeah, we're gonna select all these four um, faces and then we're gonna um, press Alt S though, so that we can shrink and then yeah. So we're gonna shrink it to a desirable size. Um, I'll just choose this and now we're gonna select these two faces right here and now we're gonna extrude scale. Actually no, not yet. Uh, we're gonna go to here, the transform pivot point and pick individual origins. So we can now scale this up right here and now we're gonna go to this panel right here, extrude region along normals and then we're gonna drag it forward a bit we have now the hand uh, the guard of the sword uh, the medieval sword that we're creating so yeah and now we're gonna select these same um, yeah faces right here and then we're gonna go subdivide this once and now we're gonna head on to the vertex uh, selection and now we're gonna press Control shift B's to make a bevel with a ver vertex though so right here we have a diamond now we can just scale it up, extrude it above, yeah after extruding and then we extrude it again and now with these four vertices right here we can just right click and then merge vertices at center so that it creates the tip. Last time um, we had to manually create these triangle faces right here though it was very tiring to be honest and now that I know more, much more about the functionalities of Blender, then we can create this very quick. So right now we are done with the blade, and now we're gonna get, head on to the handle though, which is uh, very quick though to be honest though. So we're gonna head on and select these, uh, select that vertex right there, and now we're gonna do the same thing: Control Shift B to create the bevel, and then scroll up until you have this shape right here. Um, I think three scrolls, I guess maybe. Uh, you're gonna enable. The, is this add-on called loop tools though it is a free add-on that came with uh, that comes in blender and you're gonna enable that and now uh, after you're gonna enable that you're gonna select the, these vertex uh, vertices right here and then we're gonna right click and now we're gonna go to loop tools and then circle it's gonna create a circle out of the vert uh, vertices that you have selected and it's very useful if you want to like arrange your ver vertices into a form I guess maybe so yeah and we can just scale it up and then um, extrude it and now we can just design it though in a way and then yeah extrude the scale and same thing same process if you're done then you can just um, yeah stop right there and now same thing as we did with the blade tip we're gonna right click and then go to merge vertices at center so that it creates this cap like um, to the, ha the handle so we're done with the <laughs> this sword that's very quick I know it's crazy I know yeah now we're gonna create the four materials that we're using that we'll be using <laughs> in 
this sword. We're gonna assign some materials here. So I'm just gonna go to wireframe and now I'm gonna select first the guard right here, just like this, and then select it properly. And then we go to the guard material and then assign here. And I'm just gonna make a random color it so that I can know what parts are missing, I guess, maybe. And also this as well, though. So let's do that. And now this is gonna be the metal accent right here, and then here also. So, yeah. For the rest of the, uh, it's gonna be the handle material, like this one right here. Here we go with the, uh, um, the color coding of the materials. So now we're gonna head on to the, um, the material creation, which is gonna be the fun part of this video. So yeah, um, we're gonna split the, the screen for a bit and then head on to the shader editor, and this is where it gets crazy because they have um, redesigned the, well, not redesigned, but they have touched up the uh, design of the shader editor. I mean, look at this, there's gridded dots here. And you can see that there's green, and then, yeah, it's actually really <laughs> subtle. Um, yeah, design um, upgrades to this shader editor, and I love it though. So, so we're gonna work on the blade first. So we're gonna go noise texture. We're gonna add in a noise texture, first of all. And then a uh, color ramp. Color ramp um, to the side of the noise texture right here. Now we're gonna plug in the factor of the noise texture first of all. And now um, I want you to enable this add on called um, Node Wrangler, which is a very useful um, add on for something like this, though, you know. So, yeah, you're gonna enable that right here. This is the Node Wrangler add on, very useful. And now you can control T on the noise texture, and you see this, though. So, it automatically creates you this um, setup node setup though so that you can yeah do some texture coordinates and stuff like that you know so yeah we're gonna use now um, object for the texture coordinate and now um, I guess this is it though so now we uh, add a bump node bump node yeah this is a vector node and now we're gonna add the color to the height to the height okay and then normal to is the normal and now after some time this is what you're gonna see <laughs> yeah and you gotta bring up the um, black uh, color to the, yeah, to the white color and I know it's actually um, it looks like it has lumps so we're gonna press invert so that yeah it looks like it has actually um, dents on it you can actually sc uh, do some scaling on it uh, the noise texture do some roughness detail I don't, I don't care just do what you do in this um, this noise texture right here I don't care um, it's up to you okay now I want a another noise texture to for the roughness though oh uh, actually we're gonna um, bring up the metallic shader and we're gonna put plug in the factor of the noise texture to is a roughness so that it looks like this uh, Honestly, it's really great now. Now, here I'm gonna do something that is actually <laughs> very, um, I don't know if it's complicated to you, but we're gonna do edgeware. So, edgeware is kind of like, um, I don't know how to explain this. Uh, there's some kind of worn material on the edges of the mesh, and it's kind of more like if it's actually used a lot. I'm gonna explain to you though in a second. So, we're just gonna create that. First of all, we're gonna do. Um, oh, we're gonna copy this instead, though. So, <laughs> copy this. Um, Shift D, object, vector, noise texture, and then color ramp, though. We're gonna set it down for a bit. We're gonna add in uh, a new node, though. <laughs> well, and not new, but yeah. Uh, it's called ambient inclusion. This is the first one that you actually see in the. Uh, so, we're gonna plug in the color ramp's color to the distance of the ambient occlusion and turn on inside. So, yeah. And now we're gonna add in an invert node, which is a color node. And now we're gonna plug in the color of the ambient occlusion to the color of the invert. Another color ramp. Yeah, there's like a lot of color ramps here. Um, yeah. And then, and another color ramp. <laughs> I know. And then, um, with Node Wrangler enabled, we can do Control Shift 
right click and then we connect these uh, two uh, color ramps and then boom we have ourselves a mixed uh, setup though but this is not what we're gonna be using so, uh, because we're gonna be using lighten so, okay this is important okay and now um, we get we can now plug it into the base color of the uh, uh, <laughs> this um, blade so let's just wait for the shaders to set up <laughs> because we're running out of potato pc and um yeah it's not the same yet okay um because we're gonna enable ambient occlusion and now we're gonna set up um this right here so i i don't know actually uh, i forgot to in <laughs> um in put the invert no yeah. Oh, there we go, okay, so now, um, I don't know if you're seeing this, but, yeah, it's actually very, um, yeah, just, there we go, okay, okay, so, now, if you if you want to, um, we can just, um, uh, change up the, uh, this, this color right here to what color you want it to be, though, so, if you want it to be, like, um, gray, or maybe blue, um, wait, hold on. Hopefully I did not be wrong. Oh, there we go, okay. <laughs> I forgot to, do, yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> I kind of forgot a bit. <laughs> so, this um, determines the intensity of the, uh, so now you see this though. So it's not perfect. I'm telling you that, okay. It's not perfect, okay. So, as you can see, there's some, yeah, edge wear though that I'm talking about. Um, there's kind of like worn, yeah. And, we're gonna do some gray color for the uh, and bright uh, something on the uh, then we just do some mess ups on the color ramps this is this determines the intensity of the edge wear and yeah it's kind of yeah and we can just still do something on the yeah uh, noise texture <laughs> if you get what i mean okay yeah we, we can change what color you want it to be i don't care uh, it's up to you so yeah <laughs> I was thinking of being like that, and then, hmm, yeah, just like that, boom, we have ourselves a very kind of, you know, <laughs> um, worn out metal blade, uh, to be fr frank though, and yeah, with the scratches and all that, yeah, realism, you know, so yeah, and we're gonna do the same thing for the other materials though, the guard and the metal accent. So yeah, we're just gonna copy, paste um, these uh, these nodes right here on each and every uh, and then just plug it in though. So yeah, so yeah, after plugging in these nodes on the different metal related materials of the guard and the um, metal accent, uh, you can just mess it up though on each and every material. That I just picked this as to be grayish i guess maybe or maybe that kind of yeah color uh it's up to you okay and now for the wood okay this is a wooden we're gonna plan on doing wood okay what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add a a color round though yeah huge and then uh a noise texture noise texture right here same thing we're gonna put the factor to the factor of the color ramp and now we're gonna control T on the noise texture to create this node setup and then we're gonna use the object coordinate uh, we plug in the color to this uh, base color right here and you see this right and then after that uh, we're gonna use this uh, mapping node right here and then we're gonna decrease the scale on the z-axis though so Maybe 0 0.2 would be good. Now, we're gonna select um, wood colors though. I would actually recommend you looking up on color palettes uh, related to wood. So, I'm guessing maybe we could just um, be using this color right here for the dark accent of the wood. And for the light accent, I guess maybe we could be using this one right here. So, yeah, let's just scale it, down, scale it like that. And that, that's not yet the wood texture, okay? Uh, uh, we're gonna be adding a bump node. Same thing for this um, bumping, you know? Just to make it more realistic, I guess. And um, yeah, color ramp to the height, normal to as a normal. After some time, there, there we go. We have ourselves the, yeah, uh, this wood texture. Um, actually, it's, not, it's inverted, so we're gonna press invert. 
and here we go we have ourselves a wood texture well we can just make some adjustments on the color and all that though it's up to you though okay so it's up to you what color you want it to be i would just prefer i would just like it to be like this one and then we can just make use of the uh, noise texture right here we can just increase this uh, the de detail and then scale it up and then distort i guess maybe just that okay uh, it's up to you and then just decrease the strength to make it less um, aggressive I guess and here we go we have ourselves a wooden handle um this is it guys um this is the uh, sword the, the medieval sword um it's crazy um, um this is animated with Eevee by the way um it can be done in cycles but it's slowed on my PC so we're gonna be doing an Eevee and I honestly it looks very good though to be honest um the handle the edge wear uh, the edge wear apparently it's um it's not clean okay it's not perfect edge wear but it's still quick 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 and dirty so yeah and it looks it kind of looks awesome though, to be honest and yeah so I hope you enjoyed this um, low key tutorial on how to create this medieval sword and uh, hope you're gonna subscribe to my channel though you're gonna be seeing more content like this one I'm thinking of recreating the shield but that will be on another video so yeah um, stay tuned to that and uh, I hope you have a great day peace out bro